Hello, welcome to the Friday, January 14th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, no news is good news when it comes uh, to uh, the HTTP.sys vulnerability CVE 2022 21907. Shortly after recording yesterday's podcast, someone on Twitter pointed to a well, supposed exploit for the vulnerability on GitHub, but all that's there is what claims to be an encrypted version of the exploit. Yes, a video demo, but of course that doesn't really tell you if there's anything real here. So at this point, nothing publicly available and this one particular exploit, I would uh, not really take all that serious at this point. Sadly, there are some issues uh, with uh, this latest set of updates, in particular with Windows 8.1 and Server 202012 R2, and Microsoft now confirmed these problems. The symptom here is a boot loop. One of our readers actually described it as a slow boot loop because it takes a while for the reboot then to happen. And according to Microsoft, there are issues with virtual machines in Hyper-V if the device you're running them on is using UEFI. Also some issues around the Windows Resilient File System or REFS where volumes are no longer accessible or are seen as unformatted after you install the updates. Now, sadly, the only fix here, of course, is to uninstall the update, and this does affect the cumulative updates, so uh, this will basically remove all the patches that were released, including the HTTP.sys patch. Well, and once you're done patching Windows, there's also a security advisory for Jenkins that you should pay attention to if you are using Jenkins for your DevOps pipeline. If I count it right, it's about 22 different uh, security issues that are being addressed with this update. But some of these updates only affect specific uh, plugins or features within Jenkins, so they may not necessarily affect you. Controlling access to Jenkins is certainly something that you uh, should consider. It shouldn't really be exposed to the internet, but of course Jenkins itself does interact typically with uh, multiple external components. So really segmenting it right is not always that trivial. And if you have to deal with an incident that involves QBot or QuackBot, which is a common uh, banking uh, trojan, it's been around for quite a few years. One of the artifacts that you may find is a Windows registry key that contains the configuration data for the bot. But well, that data is encrypted. Now, the bot has been around since uh, 2007. But thanks to researchers from Trustwave, uh, we now have a Python script that allows us to decrypt these configuration files. This malware is constantly evolving, and yes, while it sort of started out as a fairly straightforward banking trojan, it now uh, can be seen to do anything uh, to deliver, of course, a Cobalt Strike and other uh, payloads uh, to infected systems. We'll see how long this decryption tool will work. I remember back in the day when 2G cell phones were still a thing and uh, well these days even 3G I think is sort of slowly fading away but cell phones of course are still supporting these older standards and one of the exploited weaknesses in cell phone networks is the ability of cell phones to downgrade to these older and not just slower but also weaker standards. That's sort of one of the things the infamous Stingray devices are exploiting. Google with uh, Android now is actually adding a switch to allow you to turn off the ability to fall back to 2G. Should be pretty safe to do. I think at this point the only network at all that even supports 2G is T-Mobile in the United States. Not sure what it looks like internationally. So disabling the feature should be pretty safe and not impact uh, your coverage. 
And then we have an interesting weakness in Windows Defender Antivirus. The problem here is that the registry key being used to list all the locations that you exempt from being scanned is publicly readable by any user. So that way an attacker could read that registry key, figure out if you uh, exempt any directories and then drop malware into these directories in order to evade detection. Yet another reason to not exempt directories, unless like myself, I have sort of my little malware sue, of course, on my system that I usually exempt, but well, attackers drop it right there. That's where malware belongs anyway. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday.